Agroclimatic resilience in semi arid landscapes, Acrisol Plateau has recorded a major breakthrough for local agriculture. A first of its kind hybrid cucumber cultivated inside a state of the art greenhouse built by the Plateau State Acrisol. Located in Vaughan Plateau State, the project has started yielding an exceptional harvest. What is the success story? Where we are right now is as a result of the conception we had about some years ago, uh, basically around December 2021, when we conceived the idea of proposing in our work plan this very activity for the greenhouse, but it didn't see the light of the day until last year, late last year, when we took it up with the World Bank. And the World Bank, through the leadership of the tax team leader, Dr. Joy Agene, graciously granted us approval for the implementation of the work plan and the procurement plan, which uh, has brought us today to witness this great uh, greenhouse. Greenhouse, we actually started it in December 2022 and today as you have seen, uh, the result is fantastic. I was very much overwhelmed last week when I came to the site. It was really fantastic and very overwhelming. I was so much happy with my technical staff who have been monitoring this activity and today you can see the responses from the uh, communities whose this project is cited in their domain. They are very, very happy. And wonderfully, I'm happy to, to have achieved this feat today. I have a very supportive uh, team members, technically sound team members. Every user department has been up and doing to ensure that uh, this project is implemented so that uh, the people of Plateau State will stand to gain the benefits of the project. Uh, actually, this project Citing it in VOM in particular is not out of place. The reason is that VOM has a very great weather and VOM also is unique. It's a very big village but surrounded with quite a number of uh, federal might in terms of institutions. We have research institutes located here in VOM whereby citing this project here is not a mistake because they can tap from the knowledge of those research, uh, research institutes. And of course, one thing that I need to say about the community is that they are very receptive, very cooperative, and they are very enthusiastic. They are ready to learn. Because I can see from their zeal, from their, the way they respond to this project, it makes me very, very happy. And of course, I and my management team are making plans man, to even come in, into another dimension. You know VOM, in the whole country, they produce, in fact, about 90% of strawberries produced here on the plateau, and particularly in VOM. So we are trying to see how we can uh, collaborate with the community and also establish a demonstration, uh, you know, center for so many people to come and learn. It has been interesting because uh, to see this come to light has been a uh desire for us to see how we can implement how we can implement our work program so the greenhouse has been a dream come true and to show that uh, at least we have delivered and we have seen the community participation is part of the component B community resilience and community investment so we are happy that this has come on board first of all acquiring a place or getting a place to start with was a difficult tax so we had to come here this land this whole land here expanse of land is an agri is for Minister of Agriculture. So we had to write to them to give us a lease of some of the land. So they graciously gave us four plots of land 
to do this. So we got it from the Ministry of Agriculture in Plateau State. So that has been one of the challenges. The other challenge again is the ability to mobilize stakeholders. You know, some people don't be truly believe things that come from government. So we had to sensitize the mobilization and get people to come along. So that has been a very, we were able to overcome it with uh, the focal NGO mobilizing the stakeholders and going forward. Uh, yes, here we have, this is the um, farmers cooperative that are here operating it. So we, these are the ones, they're the ones, uh, they have come together to form under ACRISA to operate this place. This initial stage, it was solely founded by the Acrisal project. But as time goes on, just like I said last week, we have stepped down training. We have even given them enough trainings that with times we are going to hand over to the community to manage this facility, this investment we have here. So initial, at the, at the initial stage, we actually funded the, the project. And as I told you, the community are, well, are very ready and they are willing to accept the technology. Sure, there are prospects. Most of them are practicing farmers and some of them have been farming and uh, all their lives and some of them have read agriculture and they've lived in this environment they've been doing farming so it's a great joy for me to have people who are already doing it coming back to learn more and even are willing to explore and even get more of this more of this technology uh, around this area utilizing a combination of advanced breeding techniques the service provider of the greenhouse has this to say. Sometimes in October 2023, we entered into a contractual agreement with the Plateau State Acrisa for the construction of a greenhouse, um, a solar powered motorized borehole, installation of a solar pump, as well as planting 1,000 units of seedless cucumber. So we started by Acrisal handing over speedily this location to us and we quickly moved to site. Upon reaching site, the first thing we did is to conduct a hydrogeophysical survey to locate the best vest point for the drilling of the borehole. Graciously enough, we got a point where the recharge is quite enormous. The water doesn't cease at any point. Um, what we have behind us here is where the borehole is sunk and then we constructed a metal stanchion with the 3,000 liters. Now the 3,000 liters, because the water doesn't stop, at any time you can be pumping it and then you can be using it at the same time. We also had 10 units of 200 watt solar panels that are up there, meaning that even if the sunlight is very minimal, the pump can be able to pick it up and then for usage in the farm. We also constructed a 25 meters by 25 meters greenhouse with galvanized steel and the best state of the art facilities that you can have. Um, we also have 1,000 units, like I mentioned earlier on, of seedless cucumber. After doing the land preparation, the fertigation, the planting, um, and here we are, reaching the harvest. Yes, sure, because uh, if there's no continuity, then our investments are already going to go down the drain. So that is why we have made them into side committees and groups. And eventually those groups will even form more groups. Because right now, besides the 80 farmers that we have as a group, uh, in, the, in a group of 15, 80 farmers altogether, we also have other more farmers that are willing to join the group. But we said, let them get the training first. Then this 80 will now step it down to others. So there, are, there is a great enthusiasm and there are great buy-in from the community around. In fact, some people are even willing to come from town, but we said no, it has to be community-based from this place. Uh, this farm started operation some few months ago, and uh, you can see the, the progress made. We hope to expand as fast as we can go. Yeah, the, harvest, the first harvest was about 165 kg, where the second was about 64 kg, all put together about uh, 260 kg. Yeah, for now we, are, we, we have cucumber on ground, but uh, we can incorporate other crops later. But uh, we, that's, that's more reason why we need more greenhouses to expand our scope of, of operation. We have about 80 people under the program, 30 male and about 50 female. And uh, there are a lot of people 
are interested in joining the group. So uh, for now we are starting. We are still operating with this present group. In the near future, we might incorporate uh, those that are interested so that uh, we expand. What we grow here as is seedless, and they are succulent. They are very fresh, and so this is this is the quality that is demanded and is wanted in most of our supermarkets. So they rush for this product more than the, the one outside. We have enough marketers. In fact, for now, we have only one marketer of, of, of taking all the products here. The other marketers, uh, we keep promising them to wait till we, uh, production capacity increases. You know, if the economy improves, we should have nothing more than 10 of these. You know, so we, we, we believe we improve on this. And uh, we also need assistance from the referring body, or from government to assist so that we can establish more greenhouses. We can't even meet up with a quarter of our, uh, our, our demand, you know. The, uh, our offtake has, are ready to offtake on daily basis, if we can produce on daily basis. So we need more assistance so that we can build more greenhouses and produce more. In this community, most people know me, I'm into farming and I'm into selling of agric produce. And over time, uh, you know, over time I, I was beginning to have constraint and the interest of women came into uh, uh, my passions. But it's just that how do I go about it, you know, and all that. But I know that I've been having a dream to just see where women are mobilized, but how to go about it was just my major challenge until the ACRISA pro, uh, project came to Plateau State. And lucky enough, the, pro, uh, the project, they now brought it to our community. In fact, the day I heard about the project, it was like a dream come true. So, no, you know, so after that, after a period of time, they now told us we have to mobilize groups of women so that we'll be able to teach them modern farming. Most of our women here are into crude farming methods, but you know, we want the modern farming. See, most people that have their personal uh, farms, you, you hardly see somebody that will just bring you into his farm and begin to expose you to a lot of knowledge. But with this Acrisal project, after some time, you know, they started mounting, so I suspected something was going on here. And I was so excited when they said it was a government project, Acrisal, Pratu State, and they want uh, women to partake in this project. And actually, we are able to mobilize women. And even the women we mobilized were not based, of based on indigenship or all that. All the women we have in our group are women that have passion. And every one of us have a farm. So we mobilized different set of women. You know, we, in most community groups, we discover they, they mobilize weak women. But when it came to this uh, community, I now said, we need different category of women. So we engage the younger women. Among us, we have graduates that are not working and they you know we want to expose them into farming because i tell them you know actually money is into farming government has no job to offer anyone so mostly money has gone into farming i will discover youth are very lazy when it comes to farming so the passion drive was that we mobilize younger women we have graduates in our group we have women that read agriculture we have agronomists in our midst we have middle age women that are just farming but how to expand became a problem. And even part of the women, some of them dropped farming last year because they could not afford fertilizer. They could not do a lot of things. So, you know, because of that, they abandoned farming. And, you know, that is what is even increasing hunger in our country. Because if 50 of us, every woman has a farm, to some extent, it has reduced uh, um, hunger. So we made sure we brought them together and we told them we want to uh, demobilize us. Even the farmers, they came. When they started, you know, they put us through and the Acrisal Plateau State, actually, they were really following up. They made sure, in fact, in every week, they made sure they come at least two or three times. They make calls to know what, how the farm is doing. And we make sure to see that women are very serious. We don't, have a, we don't want a situation whereby people will only come to the group to just get the benefit and go. So we make sure every woman comes to the farm seven o'clock before she goes to her work. And the Acrisal Plateau said they gave us a register to take attendance of women that participate every morning. We come six, uh, seven o'clock and we come here four o'clock. We have like three groups. So out of these three groups, we have um, 
16 women, 17 to 16, that are in each group. So we are divided, we broke ourselves into like three groups. Because we discovered by the time we're living in a large number, some people will hide under other people's shadow. So we broke ourselves into three groups. And inside the three groups, each group comes to work every Mondays and Tuesdays. And if there's any work that they have to do in the farm, the, the person that maintains the farm, we, or the Acris Aplatu said they contact us to tell us, we need to do this, like these ropes here, they said we need to fix the rope. And we came, you know, to climb this place was a challenge. So someone have to drop it for us so that we can stake it down. I'm privileged to be a farmer right from childhood, from the age of five. This is because my parents are subsistent farmers. They were not privileged to go to school. And right from that tender age, we were privileged to really partake in the farming practices. But I tell you, farming or agriculture in those days was so cumbersome, such that Everything you do is stressful, but thank God with the improvisation of mechanized farming, farming is made easier. I want to say a big kudos to Plato Agrisa because you people are wonderful. We are so happy for identifying with us here in Dope community. I'm telling you, the day I saw the convoy coming to this environment, I was deeply touched. I had to follow down to this environment to really see what, who are these people and what, what are they here for. And to the glory of God, it was a, a huge uh, capital or project they are bringing into this community. And I want to say so far with this demonstration farm, I tell you, we are really proud to really identify with Plateau Agrisa because they have really touched our lives positively. Many women were not into agriculture because of the way the agricultural farming system were done in the past. When they mounted these um, gadgets here, like the, the piping, you know, where you can just own water from the tank and then water will just go around the, on, underneath the plants. It makes it easier. And so that really gave women the courage to see that agriculture can be done with ease as such and so this really gave women the opportunity to really uh, imbibe these uh, practices and I tell you the, the, with the, the produce we have gotten so far we have harvested twice in a week a lot of a lot of um, buyers are demanding for the product but the products are not enough for us to be able to meet their demands we have customers from Abuja, they come pack their cars to get our produce in large numbers, but we are, we are constrained because of the little demonstration farm we have just started. I'm just appealing and soliciting that if the World Bank can come to our aid and, and finance our project and give us more helping hand, we can be able to achieve more of this um, project whereby we can begin to cultivate um, crops like cabbage, green pepper, um, strawberry, you know, and this will help to be able to what, empower women. As I'm talking to you right now, we are only about 50 women that we are partnering with the men. More people from other communities have been coming begging that if we can incorporate them into this um, uh, group that we have started, so it will go a long way in reducing unemployment and it will go a long way in reducing the rate of theft and crime in the society. I believe we are having all these challenges because of lack of em 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 employment. One of the days there are a lot of white collar jobs, but now with the rate of population increasing day by day, if only our government can support us with grants, with finances, I think we can do something to curtail this challenge, sir. We are privileged with the men and the women alike in this community to have this kind of farm. Most of my lifetime, when I was growing up, uh, source of live, livelihood was farming. And it is through this farming that some of us were able to go to school. Uh, we have never had any access of mechanized form of agriculture. So, most of the things were done manually. 
uh, we are privileged having Akrisa with this form of mechanized uh, agriculture. This is a greenhouse. Cucumber has been planted and it is doing very well. One of the major challenges that we have as farmers is input. And while growing up, we, don't have, we did not have access to mechanized form of agriculture. You know, mechanized form of agriculture always increase input. And we are not privileged to be involved in it because it needs a lot of capital. So the one we find ourselves doing is just peasant or manually. But thank God for Acrisal, Plateau Acrisal specifically, for visiting this community and providing a greenhouse for us, especially with this uh, plan. And there are so many men that want to, uh, they are interested in this particular program. They are interested in the, in the, in the farming. Uh, the entire Joe South, particularly our location now, people have been involved in farming vegetables, strawberry, uh, cucumber. We have uh, green leaves, tomatoes, green pepper, and so many vegetables. But with the employ, uh, with this particular greenhouse, a lot will be done. And we have learned a lot from it already. We, the men, we've been visiting this farm. We categorize. We have men of about 30. We put ourselves in group and we have been visiting the farm, trying to learn more from this uh, Acrisal uh, uh, project. And it is indeed very, very interesting. It is a welcome development because with this, we can go far in farming. I served in the National Veterinary Research Institute. So I was privileged to stay within this community, dupe community. And after my service, I, there was no job forthcoming. And um, I thought of, I was actually looking for a white collar job, but it was not forthcoming. So, I decided to engage myself with some of the women in this community to actually look for something doing to also take care of my needs. So I met with one of them and uh, we engaged in uh, strawberry farming. After some time, God used Aquasite Plateau to bless us. Indeed, it's really a blessing to us. When they came in, we, we thought, uh, you know, things were not going to be rosy at his, as, as it is. But as, at, at, at this point in time, God has really been using Aquasite to be a blessing to this community, dope community. And when they came in, they really made a difference. We I thank God for the project they actually brought to this community. It has really made so many women so many graduates who are jobless to be active as it is right now we thank god for how far we have gone it has really empowered us it has enlightened us it has made us to understand that mechanized farming is good the inaugural harvest of these cucumbers demonstrated extraordinary performance both in terms of yield and quality with each vine producing a considerable number of uniformly sized cucumbers which were visible appealing boosting and vibrant green hue and smooth texture you know before before you get a green farm to but we know we have to go down to rayfield we get sometimes you go they you discover that they cannot even sell to people that are selling in smaller quantities and all that so when the food is even available can people afford it and we, from this project many women can afford you know seedless cucumbers there are women that told us that seedless they only see seedless cucumber on pictures but bringing it down to the community you know it's like 
wow is this one they call seedless cucumbers so it has attracted a lot of interest me i feel this project if every woman were up almost 50 and every woman will have a small farm you know hunger is conquered from feeding smaller uh, uh parts of the family before you go to the high if a woman that has a five children with the farm she has she can feed her children and another one that 50 you you discover that in fact will wipe out hunger because most of the conflict that uh, that happen in the communities is, is as a result of hunger by the time somebody is hungry give him five thousand he will direct people to go and keep people in your community but by the time people have everything they have to some extent conflict will be reduced and there's a common adage that says that a hungry man <laughs> definitely is an angry man so when there's hunger there's conflict so food security is one of the major ways I suggest most time to policy uh, makers to be able to curb issue of uh, hunger and conflict. In fact, in the world, in Africa, and in Nigeria. Most of the men that are not in the group, when they heard about what is happening here, some of them started calling me. I don't know how they got my number. They want to be part of it. Already, the stepping down has begun already because so many people are contacting me trying to uh, be part and parcel of the program. What we are planning to do as project is that once the project is finally handed over to them, they will use the funds that will be raised through the sales of this produce to reinvest it and to even expand. And we will come to their aid. Uh, let me disclose something that the World Bank has in stock. Uh, it's a privileged information anyway, but I am still believing and trusting God that this community are going to be beneficiaries of uh, the compo component B, which is part of this project that we are implementing. We have a portion, a, a section called uh, Community uh, uh, CRF, that is Community uh, Revolving Fund, that will be given to communities who are also interested in farming activities like this. So I'm going to make a case with the World Bank to ensure that from communities are being considered for actualization of that loan, then that will boost their production. Because just like we had already, food security is one of the major issues that, can, uh, that is resulting into unrest of uh, youth restiveness. Uh, you know, conflicts of all kinds are happening around because youths are having no work to do. And so this is also part of the challenges, critical challenges that uh, Nigerian government considered in uh, accepting this project and uniquely for northern states where these uh, challenges are you know, happening, such as poverty rate. You discover that many people around this part of the world are poor. And so what do you expect? They go into all kinds of vices that will result to youth uh, you know, restiveness. This enclosure, as you can see here, as uh, the greenhouse. It is very, very unique because unique in the sense that other kinds of uh, uh, problems that do, farmers do invest, uh, invest within their farms can never happen here. Like theft, thief cannot come here because this is within an enclosure. And so it is well protected. And as I said before, the crops that we have uh, planted here, they are early maturing. They are also disease resistant and also face resistant. So I think it's not out of place for us to consider this place and to raise this project for the benefits of the VOM and the Plateau people. Sincerely, I want to thank Plateau Agrisar for their wonderful innovation, for bringing this project to this, to this community. We pray that they will continue to support us and uh, so that we can also help the community to grow and to reduce crime rate within the community and the, the country at large. So we thank the Acrisal and their team, the World Bank. We pray that this thing will be more established in this community so that most of these women will be empowered. If a woman is empowered, they say the nation is empowered. So thank you so much. Bravo to World Bank and Plateau Acrisal. People are doing a great job. We plead for more assistance so that we can achieve more to sustain agriculture in Plateau State, in Nigeria, and the whole world at large. With this giant stride, some optakers and local marketers 
around your South local government area have expressed excitement about the prospects of having a constant supply of farm produce as farmers and experts alike are hailing this initiative as a game changer in the agricultural sector in Plateau State. <music>